I have known her. She started off, I remember many years ago, she started uh, writing children's book based on folk tales and she did those in uh, Bahasa, Indonesia. Then she started painting walls for uh, schools. She did a lot of, and she also painted canvases. Then she went into editing, graphic design, and now she has rediscovered her love for watercolors. And today she'll be teaching us how to do basic for beginners as well as intermediates, how to do whimsical florals. And in that honor, I'm wearing a nice oh whimsical <laughs> floral t-shirt. <laughs> like me. I should have worn a floral too. So now all over to Pavan. Pavan is going to start it. And uh, Pavan, maybe you can start with a little bit about all the basic materials that they have ready and what you will be doing. Thank okay. you. Hi everybody. So some of you have got the materials from me, but for those um, who are joining in and who are beginners, let's start with the paper. So the most important thing about watercolor painting is the paper. If you have good paper, your artwork can look totally different from doing it on non-watercolor paper. So just for a, a sample, let me show you. This is like a sketching uh, paper. It's very smooth. It doesn't absorb. So I did a few uh, of these flowers here, lavender. The effect looks, it might look good, but it's not really uh, what you can achieve on watercolor paper. So for watercolor paper, you need to have 300 GSM, 100% cotton, which is very important. And other than that is the brushes. Let's go on to brushes, which is I'm collecting and collecting nowadays. Uh, brushes, it's something like having, uh, for a woman, uh, having blouses. Every time you look, like, uh, look at a new color, you want that color and you want that fashion. So that's my uh, obsession with brushes. But nevertheless, we basically just need three. So one, the first is a mop brush. Okay, so let me introduce the mop brush, which you basically use for landscapes and skyscapes. Uh, whereby you need to fill your whole, a large part of your paper. These are called mop brushes. And I have Raphael, which is really the best, but you can go for uh, any other one. In this, you don't really need a pointed tip. If you have a pointed tip, that's a plus. So I'm using brush true, which is from India and Raphael. And then we have your silver brush, which is top of the line and Princeton and silver. These are top of the line brushes, but any brush which gives you uh, a pointed edge and a large body, that is good enough, you know. So this is your medium size brush, okay. And this is a number eight which is again your medium size, but you see how the tip is so pointed and nice. So basically you need a pointed tip and a nice big body to carry a whole lot of water. Then you have your small size, which is a 0.5 or a 0 0.5. And then uh, to, to make uh, flowers, uh, to make florals, two color florals such as, just giving us example of what you can do with this brush. You know, you see the two colors, orange and maroon. So I use this angular brush. It's, it's quite a fun brush to work with. Um, I'm sorry, we can't actually see what you're holding. We can only see uh, can you. See this? Can you see this now? No, we are only able to see you, but not what you're holding. We can't see the uh, other. Hi, so she has another camera. Yeah. In so which she is having the showing the stuff. So you need to pin that instead of the pin view. Pin, 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 pin so I just make that spotlight now. We can see what you're doing, yeah. Pavan. Yeah. So this is the angular brush, yeah, which uh, is basically I use for florals such as chrysanthemums, which have two colors in them. And it's, it's quite a versatile brush. You can do a lot of uh, things with this angular brush. So basically today for the florals, I'm going to be uh, moving between my uh, number eight, uh, which most of you have, and my number four. 
Okay, and I'm going to put everything else away because I want to paint with what you have. So that's about the brushes. Then about the paints, it's uh, you need a palette. So if those of you who have tube paints, uh, start taking out your paints, a little bit of paint on a palette, on your palettes, because uh, you know either you work from your pans. So the paints comes in tubes such as you get paints which are in tube form like this or you have pans. Okay, I like pans because it really makes it easier to just put your brush in, dip it in and uh, work. And then what I've done is I put out my paints from my tubes on my palette and that is something works something like a pan so you just need to uh, wet it and start working so the great thing about watercolors is that even if you get to it after one month and just put some water it will give you the same quality as a new paint it's a very economical art and so i think i've covered so you need two uh, water jugs Purim, do you want to uh, spotlight on my work table? Ba, 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 so spotlight on your work. Okay. So uh, basically you need two water jug, uh, water uh, uh, containers. One is to keep dipping in with your pigmented uh, brush. And, and the other one is washing your brush. So this you try to keep it. And uh, yeah, this is basically you keep this clean and there are two bodies of water. Then a very important thing is your rag, your paper towel or rag to keep uh, cleaning your brush on. Uh, basically, watercolor painting is more about controlling the amount of water you have in your brush. So this is very important to keep uh, dabbing your brush onto this. And we let's do that as we paint along, you will know. And then uh, we start, those of you who are painting with pans, we can, you know, I have this little uh, thing which I wet my, I spray my paints before I start. And I have my water, I have my rag, and we're ready to go. So uh, today, basically, we're going to do a bookmark, which is a little Christmassy. So it's going to look something like this. And uh, we're going to do loose florals, roses, which are going to look something like this. And uh, then I have, for those of you who will find it hard to do loose florals, we got the card. I hope all of you have drawn this on your card. So basically let's start practicing. Put your card in your uh, bookmark aside. Let's start on some rough paper. So I have actually drawn the flower on a rough paper. So for those of you who haven't, uh, do you want to just quickly do a rough sketch? It's just got five petals. Just do a rough flower. It does, it's, this is just for the effect. Let's start with learning a few techniques of watercolor. Okay, now the first thing which you all should know about watercolor is the wet on wet technique. For that, you take water, just plain water, and lay it down. And then pick up any color, and you see how it flows. Can you see? Can all of you see what I'm doing? Your video is off. Camera off. Can't see. No, your video is off. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, is that, can you see my, the wet on wet technique is where you lay down water first. So I, let me repeat that again. I lay down water first and then I lay down my water and lay down my pigment and see it flow. And then you take your brush with the water and give it an outline so that you don't have a definite edge 
you have the paint flowing. Now, if you feel you have too much pigment, wash it off, dry on the rag. And this blending technique is probably the most important technique in watercolor. Okay. So we go on to, this is called a gradient, gradient wash. Let's try another wash, which is your variated wash, which is where we put two colors. So again, lay down your water, not too much that it makes puddles. So wash, uh, dab it on your paper towel. So you'd have just enough water. Let's take two different colors now. Wash your brush. Let's take some blue. Lay down blue on the side. Let it flow. Wash your brush. Dry again. Keep the center very blended. Let it flow down. And then let's take uh, green for the other side. Lay down your green. If you have too much water, keep drying it on the towel. Wash your brush again and make a line of watercolor so that the two colors blend into each other. So this blending technique, I am doing it on wet on wet. Now let's try it wet on dry. So we don't wet our background. We just take the paint, lay down, lay down your paint, quickly wash your brush and put down water. Keep drying. If you feel there's too much water, keep dabbing it on your paper towel. And then you take your second color on the dry, lay down. That's a beautiful alizarone crimson I have and uh, lay down, you see spreading too much water, too much spread, pick it up. Control your water, pick it up, dry it on your paper towel if there's too much water. So this is the way you can just blend your two colors. Uh, this is uh, wet on wet. This is dry on wet. So there are two ways to do it. And depending on the subject, you can see which one you need. So basically, these are the two techniques. And let's put this into practice and work on our Christmas ba uh, baubles. And let's use this technique on our Christmas bubbles. Let's start with this. You can use any color you want. Let's do one wet on wet. Choose your colors. Take two colors. But the one thing you should focus on is leaving a little white area here, which will show the shine. So I, I suggest before you start, just watch me do one. Okay. I'm going to lay down my water. And you can't see it uh, because it's clear. So I've just laid out my water. And then I want to do a uh, red on one side. because That's a Christmas color. I lay it down, dark, dark, dark on one side. Let it flow. Can you see it flowing? But I have to make sure that I leave a white area on this side. So I quickly pick it up, leave the white, and then I'll take my yellow and put a bit of yellow on this side. Maybe I can mix a bit of yellow here. The important thing in white, white is sacred. White space is sacred in watercolor. So be very careful when you're doing your first wash. Leave the white space, which will give a sort of highlight. So basically here we're just learning how to control the pigment and the water. So you leave this little white space. 
Now let this dry and we'll, this is our first layer. So watercolor is basically the paintings are painted in layers. Some of the professionals do about 15, 16 layers. And, uh, but because we have just 90 minutes, so, uh, you know, we just do two, three layers. So we let this dry and we'll go back and give this a uh, darker shade here and probably uh, a little, give it a little depth and three, you know, so it looks a bit 3D. So this is a wet on wet. Let's do the second wobble, which is uh, fallen down on its side. Let's do it uh, wet on dry. So we don't put water down. Let's take some blue for this. And now where do we want the shine? Where is the light? The light is coming from here, from here. So that is why we have the highlight here. For the second one, we can have the highlight here. So this will be the darker part. We lay down, but very quickly put in your water so it doesn't form a harsh line. That's the thing you have to be really, really careful about in watercolor is no harsh lines. And that is why it's very important to go back very quickly and lay down your water, your clean water. Lay down your clean water so that it... So this is basically your blending which you need to practice and get right because this is what you will use on most of your uh, work in watercolors. So once you know these basic techniques, then it's just a matter of incorporating them in different subjects, whether you're doing florals or landscapes or still life. Uh, these are the basic techniques you need. Now we will leave this uh, probably we can do the little golden handle on top. And you can take your smallest brush or you can take a pen to do your string. So I'm going to take a pen and kind of give this string. I hope you can all see me. Just, just do it with a uh, pen and a, you know, just to get the straightness of the string. Okay. And now comes the most interesting part, which is uh, creating shadows. Let's create a shadow. Take your gray, take a bit of black or those of you who have gray, you know, just mix a lot of water in your black. So it, it's like a light shade of gray. And then on one side, take your blue. So shadows, very, the, very interesting shadows have a bit of blue, have a bit of purple in them. Let's make a shadow. This little bobble seems to have, the string is broken and seems to have fallen. And where, wherever it falls, it will give a shadow. So take your gray and give it a shadow. Take a bit of blue, so most objects, the shadow has a hint of the color of the subject. So although shadows might all seem gray, but I'm putting in a bit of blue and then I'm going to put a bit of purple also here. Purple makes the shadows of everything really interesting. And there you go, and there's your shadow. For this one, we can create a shadow on the wall at the back. So let's just give it a shadow on this side. 
put in some gray and some blue. Make sure you blend the shadow very well. So I'm basically using my pants. I go between my palette and my pants. Just create a shadow on the wall. If you feel you've put in too much water, you can even dab, dab it up with a tissue. Dab it up with a tissue. So this is your first layer, done. With the colors in place and exactly which color you want, how your highlights, where do you want your whites. We'll come back to this after it is dry. And in the meantime, let's start with our flowers. Take out your rough paper. And uh, let's uh, try, maybe you can use this also on which you have done your, so let's try making the petals of the flowers. I'm going to be teaching you this, these roses. So for these, you have to learn the stroke. You can take your number eight brushes or the larger brushes you have and fill it with any color you want, because basically we're just going to be doing the strokes of the petals. So you start with the tip. Try to keep your brush about 45 degrees angle. Start with the tip, lay it down, and bring it back up to the tip. This is your basic petal shape. This can be converted into leaves, tip, body, tip. Now this is my small brush, my number four. I'm taking my number eight. I'm gonna be working with that. Tip, body, tip. Here you see the watercolor effect in the flower. Now let's start making a C, a turned around C. Tip, body, tip. So this is what you need to practice. Tip, body, tip. Arc it in a C. So probably uh, we should practice this a few times, like do about five flowers in the C and five flowers in the opposite, uh, the turned around C, yeah. And then let's do a C upwards, like the moon. The important thing is to start with the tip, lay it down, bring it back to the tip. Okay. And then you can do the downward facing C, tip, body, bring it back. So these are your basic strokes for the petals, for the leaves. If you master this stroke, you can um, do a lot of stuff, okay? So should we practice some more? Let's do another few strokes. Or let's just, let's just start with the flower right now. Just uh, demarcate a center of a flower and probably make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots around it. These are our markers for a flower. You start with the center. Now, uh, let's just put a little, uh, give it an interesting center, like a little black in the center. And let's start with this, bring it out, tip, body tip. See how the black of the center flows into the petal? Tip, body tip. Now every petal doesn't have to be the same color. You can even 
In fact, it's more interesting. The more colors you have, the more interesting it is. The more shades you get, tip. Now this I mixed a bit of orange, a bit of yellow to give it the orangey look. And uh, I'm gonna change this to a bit of yellow. Tip, body, tip. So in this way, you don't need to draw out your flowers. You just take your brush and go. Change, change color, change color. Let's change color to Feel free to turn your paper around. Okay, so that's how you now, the same stroke can go for a leaf. Fill your brushes with a nice green. Fill your brushes with your green. And let's make some leaves. Now the very same thing goes for the leaves. Tip, body, tip with a little curve. And tip, body, tip. Same thing you do for your take different shades. Nature is full of different shades, the light falling on your leaves. Makes every leaf a different color. So that's the basic way in which you do your leaves. You can correct the tip a bit. Just make sure the tips are nice and pointed. Tip body. Oh, are you doing this only with the paint or with water first? Water. So I, I am picking up water. I'm putting in the pigment, putting in the pigment. And if it's got too much pigment, you know, it's going to make a puddle. So I take my rag and I just dab my brush lightly on the rag, on the tissue uh, paper towel, and I bring it out. And then I know if I have too much water, if it's too less water, it will give you this rough edge, which is also very artistic, I feel, you know. So I don't mind a dry brush. And um, you just have to control the amount of water on your brush. Okay, thank you. you know, and then take a secondary color of green and you can just fill the corners with it before the leaf actually dries. Give it some, give it a second color. But the basic stroke is tip, body, tip. I mean, that's just something I've made up. But um, there is no professional term for this stroke. Okay. So now let's do roses, okay? Mm, I'm gonna take another rough sheet and let's make our roses. So now, as you can see, every rose has a dark center. We need to do, each rose is in three colors. The darkest is at the center then comes a lighter and then comes the lightest. So we start with uh, whatever color you want to uh, make, whatever shade you want, whatever flash colors you want. It's fine. I'm just mixing, I'm just keeping two, three colors because I like all my flowers to be. And I'm going to make the center in a dark red. So. If you have a bright red, you can mix a bit of brown in it, or you can mix sepia, or you can mix uh, black or gray in it. Let's start with the first rose. 
this is just just watch me so the center is two c's two concentric c's very closely folded over then we have the third c which comes on top and we are, we are not yet using a tip body tip technique. Okay, we're just making some very close C's. This is my fourth C. Okay, and then I'm doing my fifth C. Now be very careful to keep your white space in the middle. That is very important because without the white space, it will just all look like one big blob. So keep your white space between each petal. And this should be your darkest color of the flower. After this, I'll take some water and I'm just going to lighten the pigment. It's the same color. I'm just putting, adding more water to it. As you can see, I've just added water to it. This is my darkest one. I've taken the same pigment and added some water to it. And at some point, I'd like to make some yellow outside to give it a double color. So now we start with the second layer. It has to, the thick part of your petal has to be on an empty spot. So we start from here, tip, body, tip. Okay, you see how it is a little broader? Every petal doesn't have to be the same. Tip, body, tip. We are not making botanically perfect paintings. We're doing art, so it's okay if... In fact, in nature, every flower and every petal is different than each other. So that's how you go with the second layer, which is lighter. And now very quickly, take some water and let this bleed in some places. Let the petal bleed out. Place your water around so that it bleeds out. If it is too dark, take some water, put it on your rag, the brush, and just control the amount of paint which comes out. And now let's take a lighter shade. Probably I want to mix a bit of yellow in this because I want my roses to be two colors. And I'm going to do the third layer. And this is starting from tip, body, tip. And very quickly with my water brush, I'll lay down water outside the tip to have it flow out. If I'm going too fast, please someone tell me. And I do my second petal. I don't want every petal to be so yellow because it will look unnatural. So I'm just going to take a bit of my red and probably while it is still wet, give it a little uh, stroke. Make sure your water brush, which you are laying down your water, is completely clean. And if you make a mistake, some mistakes are happy mistakes, they look pretty. And if you're not happy with the so-called happy mistake, you can always dab it up like I'm doing here. I think I put in too much water. In fact, I'm just going to wet this with some water and make the final petal different. I'm going to make it a wet on wet sort of technique. Tip, body, tip. I don't want to stray too far away from my basic color, so I'm giving it, it a little red. Now you see this flower. <clears throat> We've covered uh, three sides. It's not looking complete. So let's go in and put in some more petals outside. But these petals outside will be lighter in color and um, bigger, lighter and bigger, and you can really play with the water this time. So take in your, the same shade, but add more water to it so it's lighter. 
And you can even take a larger brush for this side. I think I'll do that. I'll take a larger brush for these outside petals so that now that's what I have done. I have got some gray on this. So I'm gonna just pick it up and make a lighter petal. Make sure it flows out. And this is the part which will actually make your rose into a watercolor rose. Be careful, keep your white spaces between your petals. And you go on. Now, while it is still wet, go in with your secondary shade and put it in. It should be wet because if it is not wet, you will get this harsh line. And then we can do, we can make some pretty leaves here. too light. Take your green and give it the same tip body, tip strokes and make your rose leaf. I'm trying to give it that rough edge which rose leaves have. You know they have this But if you're just um, if you're finding that difficult, just create the tip body tip leaves we had practiced earlier. You can go in with a different color and drop in your darker shades. Same thing you can do from here. And drop in your darker shades. So basically it's all about controlling your water and controlling your strokes. So this is your first layer of flowers and leaves. Once it's dry, we go back, we can lay in some more water. I'm going, let me finish some more leaves here. Okay, and because it's flowers in the corner, we don't get to surround it, but it's a good idea to have the areas which are very light in color with a contrasting green. So it pops out. Okay, now we can go back into, into our flower and we can just lay down a bit of water and make a second layer. I think most of you must have, uh, the flower must be dry by now. So just lay down a bit of water, pick up your secondary shade, the yellow or the red. I'm going to pick up the red for the center because I just want to darken some areas here. Just give it a little darkness in some parts of the petals so it looks, you know, like it's got a 
Now it's, it's got a shadow. And then once you're done with that, wherever you feel there's too much of white, you can just lay down a line, but make sure the line should never be a harsh line. If it's harsh, dip your brush in water quickly and wipe it off on the rag. Like this line is harsh and I'm giving it a so maybe the white in the center can be very fine white because that's the darkest part of the flower. But as you go out, the white needs to be more. Now let's do the outside petal. We're just gonna take a very watery shade of the same, of the same color and just give it another layer to give it a bit of depth. Isn't that making it prettier? You can see how this... So in basically in watercolors, it's your final layer, which is where you put in your details, is what creates the uh, final impact, you know. So I think that's enough love on this rose. We can go on to our card. Let's work on our card. So base, you can go on and on making roses and putting in filler leaves, filler flowers. I wish I could, there's so much to teach you. I wish I could teach you in this one class, but um, this is just the very basics. Should we just go back to our uh, bookmark and create the second layer on this? Before we go on to our card, let's finish the bookmark. Okay, let's take water and lay down again on top of our bubble. And this time we can take another, the same colors, probably give it a little orangey effect. I, I'm trying to introduce a bit of orange, but not on the white part, just keeping that white, the yellow, strengthening the yellow, introducing the orange, and then you need to create your shadow, which will be on uh, probably because the shadow we have made over here for this, we need to have made the shadow. One second. Let's, let's just make a shadow here. Let's just make the shadow at the base. You see how... I need to make the shadow on the opposite side of the highlight. This is your shadow. Make sure you blend it nicely so that it, it goes into white. You can pick up the excess water. Okay, and now you take your darkest uh, red and create a depth here. Make sure it's still wet so that there are no harsh lines. And you can do the same here, create a depth here. Again, for this, let's reinforce our shadows. Give it a second layer. Blend out the water. If you feel there's too much water, dab it up. And now lay down water on the bubble, leaving the white out because we really don't want to cover that. And Mix in a darker shade of your, mix a bit of gray in your blue 
so that you can get this depth here. Because the water is there, there will not be any dark. And then you can even go over and uh, with a white pen, like I have done in this, and I've given a, a little you know, accent, a few, a bit of design. Or you can wait for this to dry and you can uh, uh, do it with your pen, but that's uh, long work. You can do it with, a, you know, one of these jelly roll white pens. Okay, now let's do our green ferns, which is take, uh, take your lightest green, which you have probably your lemon green, this one, your lemon green, and just create these graceful strokes with the very tip of a fine brush. And, and start with your lightest green. And we will create depth with darker colors as we go along. Just tiny strokes. Now let's take the darker green. This is sap green I'm using. This is very nice green for uh, leaves. And you just give a, another accent on top, as fine as you can, but quick strokes from the center outside. from the center outside. I hope, I hope I'm not going too fast. Please let me know if, because uh, we're, we're at, okay, we have another 40 minutes to make the card. So basically this is it. And uh, I, 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 I made the subject of one uh, bubble on the floor because I wanted to give this shadow effect, show you how shadows behind and shadows below make a difference. And now you can just, you know, give a bit of dark accents on the holder of the thing. And, um, any color, any dark color. It can even be the green you're holding. Okay. Just give it a bit of an outline. I'm gonna make a little shadow for each of these spokes. And yeah, that's, that's I think our bookmark is ready. If you feel you need to go back in and clean out the edges, do that. A bit of bleeding, if the red color bleeds into your shadow, you know, and if it's looking nice, like here, I have some of the orange bleeding into my shadow and I like the look of it. I think it's looking nice. So you leave it. It doesn't have to be a very realistic because this is watercolor. And um, I do the contemporary, uh, modern kind of watercolor, which is uh, showing the effect of subjects with the watercolory feel. I don't do very precise, very 
botanical art because if I needed to have something which looks very real, I'll just take a photograph and put it up. So I, I, like, uh, I like these watercolor effects of uh, letting your colors bleed around. So are we done? Should we go on to our card? Unam, give me a thumbs up. Okay. Okay, let's go on to our card now. Now I had uh, drawn uh, this on the card because I felt that there would be some people who uh, needed guidance. At this moment, let me uh, show you some uh, art of mine, which um, this is, this is a watercolor flower. This was on my Instagram yesterday. And uh, I really like this because I, I feel I've achieved the effect of showing various layers and the whole effect in a, in a watercolor feel. This is also loose flowers with no drawing. Then I had this, uh, the autumn uh, Thanksgiving thing. This is also loose flowers. You can see I've just let the edges bleed with water. This is also loose where you just there are lots of filler flowers which you can learn. There are some, the, actually the filler flowers are very important because they create the bouquet, the effect of the bouquet and the buds, the filler flowers. And then you have these lighter flowers which are not seen in the first glance but are very important in a bouquet. And um, and this is, these are, this is what I have drawn. This is another workshop I did where I drew this and the rest of the flowers were loose and uh, roses, filler leaves, filler flowers. And this was actually drawn out with pencil and then painted. And uh, this is another workshop. Uh, I've done this so many times now, where the lemons are drawn out and the peonies and roses and filler flowers are all loose. So, yeah, so I, I hope, I just wanted you to have an idea of what loose painting is and what uh, drawn painting is. Let's uh, do this animon, anim, animon flower. Uh, I had given you all a sample, a reference photo. So this is your flower and we're going to paint this first and then do our loose roses based on the stroke we have just learned. So as you can see, the flower has white edges and it's got a dark center. So I think I need some clean water now. Okay. So put some purple in your palette and some pink. I have opera pink, which is quite bright. So this is Daniel Smith's opera pink, which is quite a bright color. And then I have used uh, the mag uh, man mangan violet, which is uh, from Shimonke. And uh, I think I'm going to mix these two shades and try to come up with something. But first let's lay down our water. Now we're going to work on every alternate petal. We are not going to work on consecutive petals because then they bleed into each other and could mess up. So lay down your water. Make sure there's not too much water if there are puddles. And lay down your purple. Center out, center out. Make sure it doesn't reach the edges because we want to leave the edges white. Okay. I hope you're all enjoying because I think the process of painting is more important than the outcome. 
So for those of you who feel you're not artists and you're not doing good work, forget about it. It's all good work as long as you enjoy yourself and you're employing the techniques and uh, you're having a good time. That's it. So lay down your purple. Don't let it reach the edges. Make sure there's no harsh edge. It should just be, if you feel it's gone too far, lift it out, bring it back, bring it back. This is just the first layer. You can make mistakes in the first layer. Let me go on to the third petal. The third petal, because we don't want uh, it to bleed into the next petal, so we are doing every alternate. Lay down your water, pick up your violet, and start bringing it out. This is your first layer. You'll have many chances to deepen the colors you want, but you won't have a chance to recover your white. So as I mentioned, white is sacred. Darken that since it's still wet. I'm just going to darken the center in lines. And now we go on to the, this is the biggest petal. So this is when you know, I mean, when you are painting uh, with the drawn uh, flower, which you are drawn in pencil, it's just filling in color. So, I enjoy this. I do. I do uh, draw out some flowers, but I more or less I'm doing loose painting now, trying to master that art. Maybe someday I'll come back to this. So that's it. Make sure you leave your white spaces. And now, if you see the reference picture, you have a sort of a shadow between each petal, which demarcates each petal. So make sure if you have a very dark, this, this petal has a dark side, let's leave a little white for the petal next to it. So we're not going to, the contrast is what is very important and what creates demarcation between two lines. Okay, so we go leaving our And you draw it out, blend it out. Now I have gone too far, my water, so I just pick it up and I dry it on my paper towel. Pick it up more, some more, dry it on your paper towel. Let's do the last petal. We bring it out. Bring it out, not too far. Yeah. Okay. Now we can take a bit of yellow for our center and just make our you can do a bit of bright yellow on one side, as you can see the centers, and it has a bit of a deeper yellow on one side. And for the pips, we can go back and come back when we're doing our second layer or maybe the first final layer, we'll do our pips. Let's do the greens. Start with your light green and I think uh, you can you can do either wet on dry or wet on wet for this. Take your greens, start dropping in your darker greens. Let them flow. Again, with every leaf, probably you can uh, do a couple of leaves at the same time because leaves are small. Then you just lay down, don't forget to lay down your clean water stroke. 
so that there are no harsh lines. There you go. So you don't have to take the same green. Dip in some yellow, some lemon green, some sap green, and create a whole lot of colors, which basically tells you that there is light falling on this plant and it is showing up in different hues. Just fill in your greens. You can start with the lighter color and you know, we can always go back and put some more water on top and put in a darker shade later. Now there's a small bud here. So let's just give it an interesting, a darkish green on one side and on this a little bit here and walk quickly with clean water create the sorry Pavanati would you mind slowing down just a tiny bit please okay. <laughs> all right thanks I was waiting for someone to tell me <laughs> I get so busy all right so once you finish your greens you'll do the bud I'm going to wait for someone to tell me to start Just make sure you have your two, three shades in each leaf. Okay. Okay, so then you can go back. Just keep, if you have dark green on your brush, just give your dark green areas a, a lick of paint. And if you have light green, go back in on those and keep working on each. So I know some, some of my students, they like to uh, finish each piece and go on to the next. Whereas I try to work with one color at a time. If I have dark green on my brush, I'll just, you know, go to all the dark green areas and do what I have to do. You can give each uh, one of these, these fat leaves on top a vein in the center. Okay, there you go. And now because this is the anemone flower, we'll take some purple and put in some purple in the bud, just a bit on top and just a bit on the body. Just a hint of purple. Okay, and you can um, draw the stem out in a dark green stem. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. Clean out your lines. Okay. So this is a very botanical sort of, uh, it's got lines, it's clean, it, nothing is flowing outside the lines. And now as a contrast, let's make roses. Have you all ready for roses? The roses we learned. I'm just trying to give every leaf a dual shade. Should we just do a second layer on our anemone flower and then go back to our roses? Now the same way, take clean water again on your brush, wash your brush nicely, wipe it. Every time you're doing another color, make sure you wipe off your brush. Take your violet shade again, but make sure you put down some water. Put down some water on two, alternate petals and do the same process of making lines, draw it out in lines. So you can see the first layer in between the darker. Make sure you've the white is not hidden, keep the white. And very, with a uh, pointed pen give the darker purple strokes. Let's go on to our third petal. Since these two petals are not really joined, you can, you know, work on them. I think I put out too much water, so I dabbed it up a bit. And then you go again. So you have the first layer showing up. But since you don't want very definite lines, probably you need to just make sure these, they don't end in a, in a very rigid, harsh line. And if you have gone too far, you can pick it up, pick up the pigment. Let's do the second and the fourth petal now. Lay down your water and not too much water, otherwise it will just all spread and you won't be able to see. So it's basically knowing how much pigment your brush carries, how much water. Center out, your strokes should be centered out. Okay. I'm doing another layer of the same color, I'm going to do the base. Now this will be even shorter than the second layer. I'm just going to give a few short lines because it's it's dry but not yet really fully dry so might as well do the third layer. And then we can since it's still wet, we can wait for some time before we uh, put in the yellow pips. 
let's go on to doing our, I've made a little Christmassy ornament here, but um, that's okay, that's, we can do that later. Let's make our, sec, our roses, I had given you uh, two spots to make a one big rose, which is half hidden behind this, and one smaller rose. So let's start with the bigger rose here. Now, since this is purple in color, I would like to again make my rose in the same shades, which is red, orange, and yellow. The, the same colors I had used for this rose, I'm going to use the same colors over here. So, let's go, oops, sorry. Okay. So let's start with the C's a little closer to the, take your darkest pigment, mix a lot of dark pigment of whatever color you are making and make your first two C's. Okay, then comes your third C around it. Now, if you can see, it's a little bigger than my sample flower because I want to cover at least so much. My, I, my aim is to have a flower which is so big. So accordingly, your center goes that way. So you have C number three. C number four and five. Okay, so this should be a nice dark with very little white showing, but don't cover the whole white. Okay, these are your, this is your first layer. Now we wash off, we take this, take some water and uh, you know. Give it the same shade, but a little lighter as you mix water. And we go in with our second layer, which is lighter. Turn your, these are such quick flowers and they're so easy. Now make sure you have your brush with clean water to just bring out, let them bleed a little bit. Control the bleeding, let it not go too far unless you feel it's looking nice. Happy accidents are most welcome. And then you can take it from here and create a little here. And drop in some darker shades now since it's still wet, saves you time in the end. Not on the whole petal, just on the sign. Yeah. And let it bleed a little bit. So just uh, putting water next to a line of paint is, let me repeat that process. This is your paint and just putting in water next to it. This is just plain water. Makes the harsh line go away. But you have to control that water. Pick it up. If it is too much, wash your brush, dry it on the paper towel, pick it up. So that's the blending technique we use in the rows. Okay. Now this is our second layer is done. Let's go to our uh, 
third layer. Now our third layer, I want to introduce the yellow. I'm using a, a, a beautiful yellow called Criniquidone yellow from um, Winsor and Newton. This is a beautiful yellow. I'm going to lay it down on one side of my palette and mix in some of my red and let's start painting the outside layers. This is the fun part. You can use a larger brush if you want. Make sure you put down your water outside. And this and bring it out. And vertices fill in your red. And then you can wash your brush if you want to start with the yellow again. And make sure you have. So my brush was a little dry here. Okay. So now I have enough uh, of the lemon, which I, now this will be behind. So just kind of give it, give the edges of the petals a little contrasting color and Let's continue with the petal here. Then we go to the next petal. While it is still wet, you can fill in your secondary shade. Try not to make it too rigid. Let's go on to the third. I'm taking a bigger brush for this layer of petals. Yeah. I think I've almost reached the size of uh, flower which I wanted. I'm going to let the edges bleed. Just move my red here. And our last petal probably again. Okay. So that's how. Now have a look at your flower, you see, just see, do you need, if you need some more petals, you feel, give it another small petal outside. If you feel this one side is a little bald. And go back in and demarcate your We'll do the second layer later. Now let's do a third flower, our second rose. Change your colors for your second rose. Probably you could do uh, something which is in pink. I'm going to do pink. I would actually love to do a blue rose. Should we do a blue rose? Let's do blue. Take your darkest blue. Uh, Prussian blue, take a dark blue for the center and let's 
let's go with the C's, our five C's. So this is my darkest blue for the center. Now I will use my uh, royal blue. I'm still using my thick brush, but because it has a fine point, it's okay. You go to the second layer. Draw out your three petals of the lighter shade of color in your second layer. You can help it bleed a little at this time. And now for the final, I've lightened my blue further. I've taken a sort of turquoise. So the third layer will be the lightest blue. And I think I'll just have to paint on top of this. And we just draw out let it bleed, put some water on the sides and let it bleed out. Just a, not the whole petal, just a part of it. Okay. You can dab in your royal blue to keep consistency. Okay, and then Go back, since I want this rose to be smaller, I'm just going to wrap the petals more tightly. Give it a little, while it is wet, put in your secondary shade. Now, does this rose look complete? I think I need another petal this side. So there it goes. I'm going to put in some water so that it bleeds a little. And maybe one small petal here. You know? Now at this point, both my brushes with both the different blues have got a little mixed up. But it's okay. And that's your smaller flower. Now let's go ahead and make our leaves. I'll give you another few minutes to complete this. For those who are done, take a strong yellow on your brush makes a lot of pigment because we just, we're gonna go in and do the dots on your anemone. So you go with your dots, some are high, some are low. Can you see? I hope you can see. Just putting these dots high, low. You can even use acrylics if you want. It just gives it a more gauche kind of a, you know, thicker consistent, more, more distinct. Okay, that's it. And now we take our um, 
gray and uh, put each dot, give each dot a sort of a grayish or in between the yellow dots, you can give your black. I'm going to use my pen for this, my Micron, because it just gives it a more definite pips sort of a look. And just fit in the middle. Okay. There you go. Please do send me all your work after the class. I'd love to please share it with me. I can showcase it on my Instagram stories. And so here we go. You can take your uh, wherever you see your pencil marks, just give it a light rub and wash it off. Now we come to the last part, which is creating the floor, uh, the leaves, the foliage for our roses. Now I'm just very quickly going to go in and make these uh, berries which I had already drawn but I, I don't think that went into the uh, project which you all got. So I'm just going to make my berries. I'm going to leave a little shining uh, highlight for each one. And here. Okay. And that's it. So, so let's get started with our greens. Take your sap green, your, your dark green. And I'll just finish this little Christmas. Since Christmas is coming, I think this card will be useful. Okay. And yeah. Okay. And then uh, I'm just going to quickly give my a little shadow. Leaves also give it a shadow just so that it pops up. Okay, now let's do the leaves for the roses. Pick up some green. Um, uh, you, you should have two, three greens on your palette, like we had done here lemon green, sap green, and um, there are so many shades of greens you can make with just a yellow and green. And uh, let's start by, because this is a white, let's give this a uh, leaf right here. Because the contrast is going to drop in your dark shades of green. Wash your brush, take some light cream here again. Doesn't matter if you go over that, just create your leaves, branches. So I'm going up. A 
again point body point you have a lot of your leaves intersecting make sure you demarcate it with different shades of green Okay. And the same we can do for here. Get your leaves, a little stem and then the leaf always works because it gives you place to create another leaf. Mix your light shades and your dark shades together. Let's give it some foliage down here. So this is actually quite free. You can go in any direction you think is just make sure the leaves are in two, three shades. And you know, for that it's it's the best thing to do is start with a light shade or you can just pick up it's very important to surround your flower with greens because that really brings out the colors guys we are about four minutes over and um, Probably you can finish these leaves at home and uh, send me send me what you've made. Yeah, in fact, uh, it'll be nice if everybody can switch on their video and show what they have made so far. I don't know if it's on. Let's see, guys, what have you made? If everybody can just hold up their uh, pieces of art, I can take a screenshot. Nice, nice. Beautiful. Oh, well, even I made something. <laughs> Let's see yours. Wow. You see, you can't go wrong with losing problems. You are a great teacher, Pavar, because you were so calm and you led us through the whole thing so beautifully. So it was very nice. It was very nice. Uh, Yes, uh, come on it now. What am I showing? I'm showing a blind. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong. <laughs> it's it's very it's nice. There's no name on this. Whose is it? Next to Vijaya's is really uh, Rim Jim. Rim Jim. Yeah. Rim Jim, yes. Super nice. Very nice. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Isn't it so uh, relaxing to do these loose flowers? Yes, it is. Lines to bother about and you just... Both, both are like that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. 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 Very nice. Complete me, Abby. Very nice. Very nicely done. Thank you. Send, send Thank all your friends to Poonam or to me. Yeah, just you can screenshot it. You can take a photo and share it with me. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Pawan. Thank you. Thank you so much.